I did say in my last video about Brexit that it would be the last time, but you know, British people, we never settle, do we? Okay, so the reason why I'm making this video is because yesterday, Michael Barnier and Boris Johnson both gave speeches in a press conference and they both just gave their updates on how the Brexit negotiations are going and I just, I don't even know what's going on myself lately to be honest. Okay, so Boris Johnson and Michael Barnier, the UK and the EU are currently negotiating our exit deal. So what is up for negotiation in those exit deals are trade negotiations, trade deals, fisheries and all that sort of thing. Basically, I just want to say how I think it should be done and what kind of Brexit that I would want the UK to have. First of all, I was very happy to hear that Michael Barnier is actually very open to a free trade deal and he's very open to no tariffs and um, access to the single market because when you think about it, for the UK's economy to survive, we can't just leave without any trade deals and we can't leave on no deal because if we left with no deal, we would be on the world trading organisation rules, but then we would be the only country in the entire existence to not have any trade deals in place. And trade deals can take decades to negotiate or, tra or trade deals can be sorted very quickly. And this is something that is actually very worrying and unstabilizing for the UK economy. Now, my vision for Brexit is that we should be striking new agreements with the single market and new agreements for the customs union because those are two institutions that are very close to the heart of the UK economy and I think the notion that Boris Johnson was even entertaining the idea of a no deal was actually a bit disastrous because a no deal exit would give this country so much instability and we would not be able to plan for the future of our country if we don't even know what trade we will be negotiating with you if we don't even know what our relationship with europe will be over the next year before we actually properly leave the entire organization on december 2021 how are we going to plan for the future of this country and the fact that boris johnson was actually basically hurling insults at the eu, EU negotiations because he was pretty much threatening them today basically threatening to like collapse the entire brexit talks if the eu insist that um um that we continue to follow their laws in a trade deal think how unstable it would be for british businesses especially businesses that trade a lot with europe right now who then might have to worry about tariffs if we if we will be exporting because we won't be having an arrangement with the custom union think how and think how unstability it, it would be for british workers michael barnier is offering access to the single market he he's offering that to us and and then he is saying that any exports or imports from the from the eu to the uk needs to be complied with eu regulations and rules which to be honest with you i'm not surprised he's saying that you are exporting to the eu why wouldn't they want you to follow their rules especially about goods why wouldn't they want to do that then boris johnson fired back at the statement saying there is no need for a free trade agreement uh, to be accepting of them eu rule regulations and standards and because of this one key difference the whole brexit talks are basically at threat of not even going ahead in the first place the reason why i voted remain in the first place because i was worried that the tories would use brexit to, to basically water down workers rights to basically water down environmental protection social protections we have with trades and businesses and there is no clear um, doubt in my mind that that is what they are trying to do here especially when they are prepared to negotiate with america and possibly accept their lower standards that we have here in the uk for food which might serve us coronated chicken on our dinner tables. The EU has some of the world's highest environmental standards and I think that's something that we should definitely include in the UK law, especially with the climate emergency and everyone is worried about climate change and the Green New Deal that Rebecca Long Bailey proposed in the last Labour manifesto, that was actually really popular. I do believe that um, Trump once called climate change a hoax created by the Chinese, so I don't think someone who denies climate change is an issue will probably have very high 
environmental uh, standards and protections and that probably wouldn't be very high in a priority if he's trying to negotiate a free trade deal with the UK post Brexit so this is something that also gets me worried as well I know this doesn't have much to do with what's being discussed with Europe and the EU right now but every time I mention America I'm always reminded that this is a country that banned Kinder Eggs because they deemed the toys that come inside the Kinder Eggs a health hazard to children but they have still not done anything on guns when children are being shot at in American schools almost on a weekly basis. I just wish we had someone more reasonable that was negotiating these and not someone who broke a hissy fit the first time that the EU suggests something that might comply with the EU rules, I don't know. Sure, of our country is actually depending on these negotiations and literally as soon as uh, Boris Johnson and, and uh, Michael Barnier uh, made their speeches, the pound dropped. So literally any time a Tory politician speaks or makes a big speech, I always check how the pound is doing because when I was a kid, the pound was like, it was like one pound to that was worth like two euros or something like that and it was 1.4 to the US dollar before this whole Brexit debacle and when I was a kid the pound was even more stronger than the figures I'm quoting now but now it's almost one to one with the euro and I just it, it, it is sad to me the the collapse of the pound because that when our economy tanks when the pound is worth less and less who are the people that suffer the most who are the people that have to deal with the repercussions of these decisions? It's not the bankers, it is not the rich, because the bankers will always get bailed out by the government. It is the working class, it is the people who are struggling to survive because they will be the ones to lose their jobs, they will be the ones to have less value in their money in their pockets. This government, and almost capitalism as a whole actually, always, always seems a way to make sure the banks are okay and always seems to make make sure that the rich and powerful are okay but no one is talking about the working class i once saw a quote online saying we should stop judging the economy by how well the rich are doing and we should start judging the, the economy by how badly the poor are doing when you think about it when inflation is bad and when the prices of your weekly shopping goes up and when the prices of your bills go up it's the working class and it's the people who are struggling who will be most affected by that because more because a bigger percentage of their income is going towards feeding their families and a bigger percentage of their income will be eaten up by the inflation rises. Basically what I'm trying to say is that I really hope that the economy doesn't tank too badly if we leave with no deal and no trade agreement because that seems to be more likely when Michael Barnier and Boris Johnson uh, disagreed on their strategies today and I just wish they could find some common ground because it is literally the future of our country that is at stake here. I can't deny how important that trade is that we get from the EU because that is a big part of our economy and when it comes to the United States I am not against a trade deal with the United States and I am not against being allies with the United States. I have a lot of issues with Trump and I do not like Trump one bit but that doesn't mean that we should be cutting off our biggest training partner because in 2017 the, the United States was the UK's number one export destination receiving 13 point 39% of the UK's imports with a total value of uh, $59 billion. So this is something that is important to the UK eco economy, but I, I, I am just against anything that would damage the future of our NHS and would damage the future of our workers' rights and protections and would damage our food standards. So this is something I'm just worried about if we are going to go in a trade deal with the United States. I just think we all need to be talking more and I think Boris Johnson and um, Michael Barnier need to be talking more and need to be coming to some sort of a broad consensus because we know Michael Barnier and Boris Johnson will never agree but that is the whole point of the whole negotiation process. I mean when we first voted for Brexit in 2016 no one thought that the EU would make it easy, no one thought that the EU would be lying down saying okay we'll give you everything you want. I mean they tried that with with Theresa May and she ended up resigning as Prime Minister because she found the negotiations too difficult and she failed to get anything through Parliament but the difference with Boris Johnson is that he actually has an 80 majority to get anything through Parliament so that is scary. But my conclusion of this video is that we, we don't know what a future of 
the UK will look like post uh, Brexit, but I'm just hoping that the country doesn't basically go down a hole.